Hello friends, welcome to the channel. I recently made this 3D printed yo-yo, still loving it by the way, and one of the things I had to design was the bearing. While the sliding mechanism I used works, it's not exactly the perfect solution. That led me to designing this and this. These models allow me to make differently sized ball bearings using the same size steel balls. So the balls in this bearing are the same as the ones in this and this. I achieved this by making all the dimensions in the model equation driven. This way I can easily create custom ball bearings for my project without having to recreate the models. This is one of those things I personally find very helpful and I just want to share it with you guys. The models have ring profiles specifically tailored for 3D printing and also a couple of well placed chamfers. The result is a 3D printed ball bearing that works really really well while also being super easy to print. To keep this video simple, I'll focus on one of the models for now. I'll elaborate more on their differences later on. So to create a custom ball bearing, you first need to download the Fusion 360 source file from the link in the description. Alright, so once you have the file on your computer, you can open it up The model should look something like this. So basically there are three bodies that need to be printed in order to make the bearing. That's one body for the outer ring and two separate bodies for the inner ring. The balls are just there to give you a visual representation of what the bearing would look like once it's assembled. So to customize this ball bearing to your specified dimensions, you need to go to modify change parameters. Alright, so once you have this window opened, you'll be able to see all the dimensions that drive this model. The model parameters themselves are equation driven, so you really don't need to make any changes here. The only section you need to concern yourself with is the user parameters. These seven parameters control all the features in the model. The first is the diameter of the steel balls you intend to use. The next is the outer diameter of the bearing you wish to create. After that, you have the hole diameter and the bearing height. These four parameters are the ones you are going to be frequently changing if you are going to be making bearings of different sizes. There is also minimum wall thickness. This just represents the thinnest wall in the model. I think 1.2mm is perfect, but you are welcome to change it if you like. There is also ball clearance. This mainly controls how tight the balls will be in the bearing. So if you print out a bearing and you notice the balls are a little too tight or too loose, you can adjust this value accordingly. Although I find 0.1 to create a nice balance. The last represents the number of balls in the bearing. This will mostly be determined by the size of the bearing and the size of the steel balls you are using. For an example, I'm going to use the dimensions of the popular 608 ball bearings. Alright, so pay attention to the model. You start to see the model update itself as I impute the dimensions. So you can see the model has changed according to the dimensions I entered. One thing I need to mention is, whenever you enter a dimension and you're getting error messages from the model, that's just to let you know that some of the dimensions you entered don't quite work well together. So you need to continue adjusting the values until the error message goes away and everything looks fine. So once you're satisfied with how the model looks, you can close this window and proceed to exporting the STL files. So I'll export the outer ring first. And then the inner rings. For this you actually only need to export one since both of them are identical and you can just print that twice. So 
So now I'm going to jump into my slicer software to prepare the STL file for printing. To print the files, you don't require any special settings, but you do need to make sure the files print without stringing. If you are using Simplify 3D like me, open your profile settings, go to advanced and check this box, avoid crossing outlines for travel movements. That should take care of the stringing problem. You would also want to print with 100% infill. So once you have the parts printed out, you need to insert the steel balls and then glue the inner rings together. To test the bearing, I'll use my fidget spinner. The bearing is usually a little stiff at first, but once I apply a little oil and spin it a couple of times, the bearing starts to loosen up. For the second design, I included a part called the cage. The cage separates the balls from the inner ring and the outer ring. This really improves the performance of the bearing. Here is a little comparison I did using the fidget spinner. The second design does print in four parts, which means getting the balls in can be a little tricky. This is my preferred design though. I only use the first when I need to make really small bearings. This one I actually made for my 3D printed yo-yo. So there you have it guys. I hope you found this video helpful. This is not intended to replace professionally manufactured metal bearings, but it does save me a lot of money since all I really need to buy are the steel balls and they are quite cheap. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.